We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? You know, um, I think I think we're all good over here. Uh, we're gonna do a we're gonna do an Ask Sloopcast right off the top. Let's uh, let's go ahead and say that we're recording this a few days early because of some business travel. So um, in case anything changes uh, over the weekend, uh, we're ignorant of it. We're normally kind of ignorant, <laughs> but in this case, we have an excuse. All right, Kyle, it is Ask Sloopcast time. Uh, do you have the questions up? Do you have uh, any place you'd like to start? I do. Let's just let's just start from the top here, Jared. <clears throat> Um, all right. Uh, let's see. We have one from Holly Sal. Holly Sal? Holy. Uh, Holy Sal. Holly. Holy. I assume Holy so. Sal. That wor- That works too. All right. Yeah. Ohio State uh, con- game days- context on this one. This is in response to me asking, uh, if you're, uh, what's an unpopular opinion regarding Ohio State or college football? Yeah. And they said Ohio State's game day experience and home field advantage are overrated. So two thoughts on this one. It's kind of impossible for Northern schools to compete with the Southern schools in regards to tailgates, just because of weather, because of temperatures and all that. So if we're talking about game day experience in that regard. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, uh, the, the weather is prohibitive. The, the temperatures are prohibitive. That's just, that's just the way that is. Um, now, as far as home field advantage, here's the thing. Um, it is, when, when it's your team, you see the stadium at its west, at its best and its worst. You know how, everyone knows how dead the shoe can be if, you know, you're up against Akron at noon. But do do you think the Florida games or the Bama games are any better when they're playing in FCS school at noon? In the middle of November? <laughs> November, <laughs> September, doesn't matter. Do, do, do you actually think that they're any better? Because they aren't. You are only watching the Alabama game the Florida game when they're playing Georgia, LSU, whatever. Right. And when Ohio state has Penn state or Michigan or whomever in town, the shoes going, you see it's your team. So you see it at its worst and at its best. That that's it. But as far as the tailgate stuff goes, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, Northern schools just are going to have a hard time competing because of weather. It's reality. Of course. Of course. <clears throat> All right. Let's get into some other questions here. Uh, All right. Next question here. We have our good friend, Austin. What percentage chance do you give Ohio State to win the Big Ten? <laughs> okay. This was in the beginning of uh, yeah, February this... when, he, when he asked this. <laughs> Is it any um, better? Is it actually any better or any worse? Has your opinion changed in a month? Three weeks? What's your percentage chance to give Ohio State to win the Big Ten and get an auto bid to the NCAA tournament? Um, I'll say 5%. I think that's, that's being generous. Yeah, that's generous. That's that's generous. That's very generous. Um, I mean... Give them 20 chances, they do it once? I don't think so. I do not think yeah, so. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, it's not zero. But it's closer to zero than it is five. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, give them a thousand give chances, it- they do it twice is where I'm at, Austin says. I think that's a little tough, but it's, it's, a, it's like, it's like 1%. That's 0.5%. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, 
Odin has a couple of questions here. Would you be worried as a GM if a potential QB says they mirror their style close to Vic and Watson? Which is what CJ Stroud said at his press conference at the Combine. Please note that he says his style. Not yes. His on field style. Um, you really have to acknowledge that that's specifically what he was talking about. That being said, is it a smart answer? No, it's not. You're specifically referencing two people who had serious, I mean, at the very least, serious accusations and serious suspensions from the NFL. Yep. So you do have to, you do have to, if you're, if you're CJ Stroud, you, you have to do better with that question. That's, that's not where you want to go, especially when one of the teams potentially drafting you are the Houston Texans. Like that's probably not what the ownership in Houston wants to hear. Um, but it, it really can't be, it can't be overlooked. It can't be, it can't be ignored that he was specifically talking about like stylistic plays. Unless you don't want to be a Houston Texan, he's playing chess, not checkers. There are worse place to ends up to end up than Houston. Yeah, there there are worse place to ends to end up for sure. All right, I don't think there the, are. Oh. No, there there's absolutely worse places than Houston. I'm not saying they that they're in the top half, but I could name five places I'd less want to play. Yeah. Also, Vic How? was a beast besides the IRL fuck-ups. Here, Vic, to me, was a better highlight machine than he was an NFL quarterback. All of his running got him hurt too often. He wasn't available at the end of seasons a lot. He, he wasn't all that accurate, too. He was, yeah, he was not, he's a big, strong-arm quarterback, but he was not good at dissecting defenses, his accuracy was okay at times, not super precision. Um, he relied too much on his running. Yeah. He played in a different NFL time. Not really. He he played in the same time as, as Vic, or excuse me, he is Vic, as, as Manning and as... Brett don't be Fever. silly. I'm not being silly. He... he he played in the same NFL as Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and Brett Favre. Let's let's not let's not be silly here. I'm yeah. not being silly. He was a better highlight. He's a better highlight player than he was an actual quarterback. He's mm-hmm. great. He's great on Sports Center, but that doesn't necessarily win football games. Yeah. Uh, um, Odin ha- has a question about. Um, he wants to know how far will Carter drop, and he means um, Jalen Carter, the um, Georgia player who. Yeah, in a potentially in a lot of lot of trouble here after. Um, Wrecking his car, um, killing people. Well, and let's not let's not say he killed someone. I think that's I think that's an overstatement. He was involved in a street race in which people died. Mm-hmm. Um, and he left the scene of the accident. So there's nuance there. Um, you, I think everyone probably remembers it wasn't that long ago. A Georgia. Uh, I think it was a couple Georgia football uh, football players died. Um, the there there was an administrative person there as well. Um, as it turns out, Jalen Carter was 
involved in that, in that they were out racing, driving recklessly together. Um, he'll get drafted, though. His stock definitely dropped a tad, Zach says. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Maybe the taddiest of tads. The tad, I, I don't, he's, he's insanely big. He's insanely fast for his size. And there'll be a team and it only takes one team to be like, well, he just left the scene of an accident. I, I'm, I'm not saying I'm saying that. I'm saying there'll be an organization who's too in love with his size speed combination and will pull the trigger. Yeah. Um, they, they will justify it as not that bad. Not that bad by driving over a hundred miles an hour over two times the, um, alcohol, uh, concentration than the legal limit is for the state of Georgia. Yeah. Sure. I, someone will justify it. I'm, I don't, I'm not saying I agree. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they're correct in justifying it. I'm saying he's insanely big and insanely fast for his speed. He is a different yep. type of athlete, but, and someone but will justify the, it. But to answer the question, how far, not as far as it should, he should. Uh, yeah, I, I still think he was a guy who was talked about as top five, and now he might drop out of the top ten a bit. Yeah. And it's really just a All bit. Right. I'd be shocked if he goes into the 20s. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, next question here from our good friend. Gangland? From Gangland here. Um, JSN no run 40. What is he hiding? This is act asked tongue in cheek. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, he has a hamstring issue. If you can't run your best 40, don't run the 40 period. Yeah. And even if he is maybe now capable of running the 40, he hasn't been training. He hasn't been capable of training his 40 the way everyone else has been. Oh, he's if going you to do can't be run hurting, your best hurting himself. Yeah. And you do risk re-injury. Well, both re-injuring and also hurting his stock too. Yes. And again, both. like these guys train for months to get, a tenth of a second off of their 40 time. He wasn't capable of doing that. It's yep, a no-win yep. situation. All, yeah. all, so all he, JSN he, has to do is say, look at my tape. Yeah. So what's he hiding? He's he's trying to protect his stock draft. That's that's all it is. Trying to protect his hamstring. Yeah. All right. Uh, Buckeye Zach in the chat here has a few questions. On a scale of one to five, with five being the best, one at worst, where would you rank the atrocious b-ball team? I mean, this is legitimately the worst Ohio State basketball team in a very long time. So by Ohio State standards, it's a one. Yes. It's Holtman's worst team. Uh, it's worst. It's worse than any Thad Mata team. Um, worse since 98, Zach says. That sounds about right, yeah. Yep. Yeah, the last time they've had a worse record than they do right now was the 97-98 season where they went 8-22 and and were 1-15 and in conference. So if you're the worst, Ohio, the worst Ohio State basketball team in over 20 years... And that was Jim O'Brien's first year. Yeah. <laughs> In well over 20 years. Mm -hmm. what, what would it be? 25 years. So, yeah. I mean, at first I was going to answer this at two, but no, Jared, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Like, worst record 
in um, 25 years. This will be only the second time that Ohio State, uh, and unless, unless they go on a like a huge win streak here, they have the looked better. Yeah, better, they, they, not not good. Yeah, this, better. This will be the first time since uh, the two thousand three two thousand four season. First time that they'll be going um, under five hundred. Yeah. Um. All right. What's um, with Lee's what's hate with the on... Lee hate on Harrison? Discuss. I'll, I'll be honest. I've been out of social media a lot, so I'm curious on what this is about. Darren Lee decided to attack Zach Harrison on social media for not living up to the hype. Um, okay. It's a weird. It's a weird look from from Darren Lee. I'm not going to sit here and psychoanalyze Darren Lee. Um, I know he has voiced frustration from the standpoint in the past, from the standpoint of like, he's mad that Ohio State hasn't won a national title since he won a national title that he was, he's mad that the, the defense sucks. Just say it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you can say the defense sucks without personally attacking one individual on the defense. That's that's the issue here. You want to call out the coaching? You want to call out the defense as a whole? Go for it. Do it. We, we've all been doing that. He has every right to do it as well. Why are you attacking specifically Zach Harrison in the weeks, months leading up to the combine. That's, I mean, you're, you are potentially costing the man uh, money. Why now? Why are you doing it now? If you wanted to motivate him, if you wanted to call him out, why are you doing it now and not last year or during the season? Mm -hmm. Why now? A Again, I'm not, I'm not going to psychoanalyze, not publicly anyway, Darren Lee, but I think there's frustration there on his part. Yeah. It's because he said he wouldn't, it's because he said he wouldn't participate combine wise. It's a grown frustration. Yeah, I mean, I get that. I understand that, but. Again, that's like your brotherhood there. Why are you attacking him in the months leading up to the draft? Interesting. Zach Harrison, um, apparently he's doing doing pretty well in the um, combine right now, Jerry. I'm just I'm just kind of reading up right now. Sure, go ahead. 25 presses at 225 pounds. That's good. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, and he has the uh, longest arm span of any defensive lineman in the NFL scouting combined since 2014 at 36 and a quarter inches. Yeah, no, he's incredibly talented. He played in some schematically terrible defenses at Ohio State. Yes. And again... Why Darren Lee chooses to attack one person on a defense of many people in the months yep. leading up to the combine, potentially costing Zach Harrison money, is beyond me. Mm -hmm. We have other questions to get to, though, Kyle. Yep, sure. All right. Um, would Aaron Kraft be a good head coach? What could be any worse than Chris Chokeman? You gotta you gotta do better on the nicknames. That's that's just lazy. Um I mean, could Aaron Kraft be a good head coach? Yeah. Um but Maybe. it doesn't I, I think yeah, I think Aaron Kraft has the the making to be a a decent head coach. Yeah. Right? 
And what is he doing right now, though? You you don't you don't go from no coaching experience to coaching Ohio State. That's a good question. I'm not sure what uh, Mr. Uh... Playing in Europe, I think. Regardless, if he wants to start a coaching career, get some experience, then we can talk. Then we can talk. You don't, again, you don't go straight from the Euro Leagues as a player to the head coach at Ohio State. That's not how that mm-hmm. works. And I know, I know, by the way, that I recently said on the podcast that LeBron James could be the coach if he wanted to be, but that's LeBron James. Shut up. <laughs> Recruiting alone. LeBron James becomes your head coach. And I said that tongue in cheek for what it's worth. I mean, he could be worse. Yeah, no. Chris Holtman's not done a good job at Ohio State. They should replace him. But it can be worse. Make no mistake. It can get a lot worse than Chris Holtman. Soon to be, Jared. Dr. Kraft. There you go. Soon to be Dr. Kraft. (laughs) At Ohio State, I don't think it can. Yeah, no, it absolutely can. It absolutely can. 100%. 100%. It can be a lot worse. Yep. Ohio State basketball is not an invincible beast. All right. All right. Let's see here. Um, We got Austin with some more, some more things here, Jared. Uh, he says basketball, NFL, uh, that, combine. That was my prompt. And, okay. Uh, of of the viable options, which team is best for Justin Fields to go to? Do you mean C.J. Stroud? Did you mean to say C.J. Stroud, Austin? <coughs> I'm, going to assume he, I'm going to assume he meant C.J. Stroud. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I was about to say, I don't think, I don't think Chicago is walking away from Justin Fields anytime soon. <laughs> Mm. Indy? No. Indy's... Sorry, sorry, Austin. I'd much rather be... I'd ra- much rather go to the Houston organization than the Indianapolis organization. Indianapolis would be... You are absolutely insane. Uh, y- you're not seeing past your home team bias. Well, yeah, I don't think New England's going to be in position, Zach. Um, I'm not even saying Indy, just not Houston. They're fucking terrible. Okay. Well, the, I mean, the the problem is that he's probably going to go to a terrible team right now. So that's how that works. Yeah. That's, um, how, that's how the draft works. That is how that works. Um, it's it's rare that a really good team has a really bad season and then drafts a quarterback. It happens. It has happened. So let's see here. Chicago picks first. No. Well, they'll probably Houston trade out, but sec- whatever. Yeah. Houston picks second. Not okay. a great situation. Arizona, they got they got Kyler Murray there. That no. is a perennial that that's just a, a terrible organization and always has been. The Cardinals? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Indianapolis Colts. Uh, again, remove the Peyton Manning years. It's a terrible organization. I'm uh, not saying Seattle's... I like Houston. I'm saying you can do worse organizationally. Maybe Seattle. Seattle's not bad. I think I think Seattle might be my might be the choice might be the answer here austin the cardinals are a worse organizations the brown are a worse organization um the raiders i'll say it are a worse organization um i think the colts are a worse organization i know you don't want to hear that but you remove the Manning years and they are what they are. The Jets are a terrible organization. I quite frankly wouldn't want to 
fuck around with the Cowboys. I know that's a weird take, but I don't think good coaches want to play for Jerry Jones. And I think that that's they're they're a, they're a successful organization that's also highly dysfunctional. Yeah. I think you can do worse so as far as organizations go. So let's see the teams. So Texans would be looking for a quarterback. Colts would be Seattle would be uh, Detroit. I believe may that's a worse organization than Houston. Be? Yeah. Um. Lost. Uh. The Raiders wouldn't be. Would the Falcons be looking for a quarterback? I don't know. The Raiders would be, wouldn't they? I I didn't think so. I thought they had um. They no, had, no, he um, he, he left. He left. He's gone. Ah, okay. Ky- so Kyle's then... been preoccupied with the baby over the past couple months. Anything that's happened in the NFL since yep. uh, December. <laughs> whew. All right. Uh, so the Raiders, uh, the Falcons. I, I I don't remember who the who the Falcons have. Uh, the Panthers. Yeah, uh, the Panthers would be another would be another team that um does be looking for quarterbacks as well. Austin, I'm talking about long spread organizational success. Yeah, Carolina is not good either. Yeah. Um, not, a, not a good run organization. No. I don't like any of these options. They're all here for a reason. No. I, I honestly think maybe the best option is maybe Seattle. Probably. Would, I'm going to go with Seattle. I would. Yeah, that's I would say that was probably his best choice. All right. Next question here, Jared. Who will be the guy that we see photos of after winter workouts into the spring and go, oh, shit, he's huge. Typically, typically you see that jump f- freshman to sophomore. Sonny Styles is a good answer. I think Zach beat us too. Yeah, that, that that is a great answer. I think that's that that's probably the winning answer. That freshman to sophomore jump, add in the fact that he's younger than than your average sophomore. Um I think he, yeah, I think, Zach, I really don't appreciate that you jumped on the correct answer right away and, and ruined this for <laughs> Kyle and I, but you're you're just too right here. You're a little too right, a little too quickly for, I forgive you though. Yeah. I, I think that's the answer. That's straight up the answer. Yeah. I think so. I'm, I'm trying to think of another player. That might be better than that, but no, I think, I think you're right. (laughs) All right. Um, What two players on the Buckeye team on different sides of the ball are best friends? Two players on the Buckeye team on different sides of the ball are best friends. This, this, this doesn't feel like an opinion question. This feels like, like who's, who's the, Who's the Tyvis Powell, um, Cardell Jones of the current roster? I don't know. I'm trying to think. I'm I'm just looking at the uh, the roster here, and I just do we have a list of roommates? <laughs> yeah, I cannot. Do we find have that. a list of roommates? Is that is that listed on the Ohio State website? Um, I, I don't know. Is there is there an actual answer to this one, Austin? Or was this supposed to be kind of goofy and open-ended? I'm not sure what you were going for in this one. Just goofy? It says goofy. You know, on opposite ends. Yeah, opposite position, opposite offense, defense. I'll, I'll Austin with, has you know, sources. <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh I will go uh a fan favorite in the okay. uh, Sloop Cats in the Sloop Cats here. Uh great first name. Great first name by the way. Uh I'll go with McCord. 
Uh, he says the answer is Evan Pryor and Jack Sawyer, by the way. And that is obvious. Is it? <laughs> is that obvious? No, I was, uh, was going to say McCord and Burke, but. I think, I, like, no I, reason, I feel like no there's, reason. I feel like there's a correct answer as far as like, like McCord and Harrison, but of course they're both on the offensive side of the ball. The quarterback, the wide receiver, played together in high school, all of that. But that that's not yeah. the question. Yeah. Um, it feels it feels weird to say like Marvin Harrison and you know, pick a cornerback, because they probably aren't best friends. Uh I, I don't know. I, I feel like I should be coming up with a clever answer here. I don't I don't think I have one. Sorry. Yeah. All right. All right, we'll, we'll, move on to, we'll move on to the next question here. Which of Ohio State's Big Ten East games will be toughest this year, bearing Penn State and Michigan? Um, Big Ten East? So you're you're talking about, I mean, that Michigan leaves, State, Maryland, Indiana. Maryland, Rutgers, and Indiana. And Michigan State. And Sparty. Uh, God, we, Sparty, we were I guess last year, Jer- we were sitting here last year, but like, man, Sparty's that unknown. They could be good. They could be uh-huh. terrible. And <laughs> they turned out not to be very good. Yeah. Uh, I don't have high hopes for any of those teams. I don't no, like Indiana don't. right now. Um, I do like the general direction. Both Maryland and Rutgers are moving in, but they're, they're growing slow. Yeah. Um, I think they're moving in the correct direction. I think it's tough sledding for them. They're doing what they can. Growing they're... slow. I like like how 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 slow growing uh Bryce Young is. Ao. <laughs> um. Yeah, I just I don't I don't see any of those teams right now as like a legitimate threat to no, the top three in either. the Big East. The Big East. If you're going to tell me the which one, East. if you're going to tell me like which one would be like the toughest game, probably Sparty. Um, but I, 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 I <laughs> I'm probably, I'm probably going to get hate, hate here, but I'm going to go the very first game here at Indiana because the other games is home to Maryland. At Rutgers and home to Sparty. I'm, I'm, I'll go with at Indiana being the very first game of the of the season. Maybe they're overlooking them. Maybe they're thinking about Notre Dame. New quarterback. Yeah, uh, that's a good answer. You know, Kyle. You know, I'll, I'll change my answer. I think Kyle's right. All right. Simply because they're overlooking them, they have some player turnover. More circumstance than a compliment to Indiana. Yep. Um, We kind of talked about Zach Harrison already here. Uh, What number receiver will JSN be off the board? Will he be? I don't know if I buy all of the JSN. I don't know what word to use here. Hate feels like the wrong word to use, but I, I feel like there's some intentional downselling being done by teams to try and get him to fall to them. Mm-hmm. If I'm being honest, I think that's what's happening. Yeah. I, I have a feeling, I have a feeling that there's the number that's sticking in my mind is three. I think that's probably about right. I, I'm I'm telling you though, I still wouldn't be shocked to be to see it be number one. He's still yeah. the number one wide receiver I'd take. The hamstring issue doesn't scare me off at all. Yeah, yeah. I still I wouldn't I would not be like, oh my god, holy shit, I can't believe that happened. I like okay, it was all smokescreen because it's kind of what I I I think a lot of the negative discourse around. JSN right now are GMs trying to tank his stock in hopes to yep, yep. get him. 
All right. Um, will Dewan Jones be a first rounder, second or third or later? Um, well, I think, you know, we'll see what the mocks say now that we're sort of post combine or we will be post combine very soon. Um, I don't think he's a first rounder. No, I don't think he's a good enough at the NFL level. I don't think he'll be a good enough pass blocker to be considered a left tackle in the NFL. You have to be like a shut down pass blocking left tackle to get a first round pick in the NFL to be guaranteed a first round pick in the NFL as a tackle. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. If they're looking at you as a right tackle from the very beginning, not a, we'll see if you can play left tackle, but then we'll move him to right tackle if it doesn't work out at left. No, they, everyone's just like, he's a right tackle, potentially a guard. I've seen some people want to move him into guard. Um, I don't think so. I think he's a right tackle through and through. Um, All right. Um, second, I'll, I'll, it- I'll go with second round. Yeah, I, I honestly think it's going to be third or later here. All right, I'll answer this question, Jared. Um, I'll be right back here. Besides the Saints and the Bengals, which NFL team do you associate with drafting Buckeyes? Hmm. Um, the the Bengals, I feel like, have picked up a lot of their guys, a lot of their Ohio State guys through free agency. Um. Although that has at least changed somewhat in recent years years but i feel like a lot of ohio state guys have found like second or third homes in cincinnati and not necessarily being drafted by cincinnati um the saints are obviously a a good answer um carolina's done it a lot um trying i'm hard having a hard time getting past the saints um, there was a point in time in which Pittsburgh drafted a lot of Buckeyes, although that has not been as true as of late. Um, I'd be interested to see like the recent number breakdowns on this. Um, cause I'm honestly not sure. Uh, again, the saints are the obvious answer here. I don't know. Uh, Austin, Zach, do you have any thoughts on this one? Cause I got nothing. I mean, I don't have nothing. I I have more general musings than a than a correct answer. You don't know? Okay. I thought maybe you yeah. May I, feel, have I feel had like the... the Jets. Um, Garrett Wilson, obviously. Who else in recent years? I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. Um. Lineman. Um, well, well, Mangold, that? but Mangold, that was a long time ago. That that was a long time ago, but yeah. All right. Um. Yeah, I'd be interested to see the actual numbers on that, but um, I don't think we're gonna look that up live on the podcast. Um. Yep, yep. Austin right. asks, um, "Is Holtman fired yet? I'll tune back in when he is." Yeah, yeah. I might have butchered that name, but Norwell was a Jet. Yeah, th- there it is, Norwell. Uh, there is an yes. R in there. All right. Um, over under 39.5% chance Bronny commits to Ohio State. Um, Under? Yeah, I'm going to go under as well. It's not drastically under that, but it is under that. Because I, th- I just think there's just... There's a lot of options, well, I mean, obviously, <laughs> a lot of options that he, he could go to here. Yeah, and just why why would, why would a top flight recruit pick Ohio State right now? Yeah, that, that's that's true. And Ohio State is in his top three. I I know. Okay, but how, mu- how much of that has dropped right now after seeing this year? And, and how much of that is, and like, I, I get that, he doesn't live in Ohio right now. But how, but how, much, how, he really... how much of that is the kid from Indiana leaving the Indiana hat on the table right next to the Ohio State and Penn State hat when we all know he's not going to Indiana? 
How much of that is the kid from South Carolina with a hat, you know, South Carolina, but also here's a Bama hat and a Georgia hat and an Ohio State hat. You know what I mean? Like, we all know he's not going to be a Gamecock. How, is that Ohio State for Bronny right now? Maybe. Uh, who is your dream 2024 recruit for Ohio State to land that is a realistic choice? Um, I don't have my recruiting stuff up right now. I'm blanking on his name. Um, maybe I can get my, um, crap. I can't think of his name. Someone help me out here. He's the quarterback. Ohio State had two quarterback guys who they both really liked. Um, The one guy was ever since, you know, Ohio State had a guy, he leaves. Um, But then the other guy has been flirting with Michigan for a while. I cannot think of his name. Who's the guy? Jaden Davis. Yes. Thank you, Austin. Thank you. Um, Quarterback Jaden Davis. Not not only not only do you resecure the quarterback position after losing the top player in you yeah, know the top player it. on on the dra- or on the recruiting boards but you're also keeping that quarterback away from Michigan so uh, i think that's a no brainer yeah actually he's a, he's a he's a quality uh yeah he's no he's actually a cusp on the five star right now he moved up. He's 24th nationally right now. So and Ohio he, he State has, liked he, him as much as... Start. Ohio State liked him as much as they liked Rayola. It was just a situation where it was like, which one do you guys want to commit first? Rayola committed. Yeah. And hopefully Ohio State can repair... Recover. You know, what may have been tarnished in that relationship. Yep. And regain some space and, and pick up Jaden Davis. I want the Ohio state to get KJ Bolden. I think he is a perfect fit for the Ohio state defense. I agree. I 100. Why, why is Jim Harbaugh in the chat right now? Um, I agree. Austin, I totally agree. Um, but championships are won by, excuse me, championships are won by quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can get a top, if you can get a five star quarterback, you get the five star quarterback. Yeah. I yeah. also want Josiah Trader. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't think we need to use magic to get Josiah Trader, though. I don't think we need to. Yeah. Or, you know, any magic beyond our uh, standard recruiting on Josiah Trader. Yep, yep. All right, this one I like. This one I like, Jared. Make your best team of five Buckeye Bucks. Or, excuse me, make your best team of five basket Bucks from the Thad slash Holt era to win a 5v5 tournament. Okay. I, I got mine in their, in their best, in their best as a Buckeye. Again, as a Buckeye. Yeah. Yeah. I I think the first pick's a no brainer. I, I, what's that? The first pick's a no brainer. Which one's that? One is Ohio state in that entire, who's the best center. Who's basically the only NBA talent. What's that? You got to put Odin in there. Yep. Odin. That's that's pick number one. That's pick number one. Pick number two, I I got to put um, maybe like Evan Turner. I think Evan Turner just such a such a game changer there. If so we're my going five, in, Jared, if we're going in my, my order, fi- I take Mike Conley five, first. I would pick. Um, I would have Odin, Turner, Conley, Solinger, and Lighty. Those would be my five. Um, 
Craft would be the sixth man for me, uh, <laughs> Austin. <laughs> I don't. But we can't also forget about like D'Angelo. D'Angelo Russell is in there as well. Terrence uh, Dials, uh, Buford. What's um, what Austin said? Kraft doesn't need to score in this offense. I think if you're actually trying to not just pick the best five players, but actually put together a starting five. I think you need craft in that lineup. Someone who's going to play incredible defense and distribute the ball to the other guys to score points. Mm -hmm. I, I think, I, I think it has, I think it has to be craft. I think it absolutely you surround, he, you know, to, to talk, to make this like, the 90s Bulls, right? You need a Ron Harper on that team. Aaron Kraft is your Ron Harper. Mm-hmm. Someone who's just going to distribute the ball mm-hmm. and play solid defense. Not even solid defense, elite defense from both Ron yeah. Harper and Kraft. I didn't think I was going to compare Aaron Kraft to Ron Harper today, but here we are. Mm-hmm. Kraft was your second choice after Odin. Now that's that's a little silly. Yeah. But I, I'll stick with mine. Odin, Odin, Turner, Conley, Sullinger, Lighty. That's that's my five. Yeah, Odin, Odin's pick one one. Yes, I think that's a no brainer. Power forward, Sullinger. Don't really need a. Uh, I'm gonna take Mike Conley as my shooting guard. Aaron Kraft is my point guard. And then, I think I'll just have a third guard, and it's gonna be like David Lighty starting but we're going to get a decent amount of Diebler. Like, Diebler's my sixth guy coming in for Lighty. Mm-hmm. And they're sort of playing that guard sort of... You know, it's, it's a, sort of a flex guard, small forward sort of position. Um, yep. I think that's my starting five. Yep. All right, Kyle, is that our last question? That is it. That That is it, Jared. Where does Daquan Cook fit in? We forget Deshaun Thomas. These are all good players, but if I'm crafting a five, they're not in the five. Someone, someone who had like outstanding talent that we didn't get to see much of just because of all the other talent that was around him? Slam Thompson. What about KK? Yeah. Costa Kufus. I mean, incredibly talented again, again, player, but he just didn't do anything <laughs> at Ohio State. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I, Bates yeah. Diop deserves to be on the roster. He's making, he, if you're putting together a 12, Kate's Diop's going to make the 12 mm-hmm. uh, for sure. Yeah. Deshaun Tate, another name. Yeah, there's lots of there's lots of good names. Um, if we maybe were better prepared for this, we'd maybe put together a full twelve. But we're not going to do that. Yeah, we're we're coming yeah. up at the all end right. of the show. Yep, that's it, Jared. That is all the questions. All right, Kyle. I want to encourage everyone to come join the Discord server. Liddell. We to- we totally forget about Liddell. He's we. Liddell is making the the 12 but he's not in my starting five yeah i'd rather but, have i'd rather have i'd rather have jj selinger on the court but yeah, yeah. no no 100 percent austin he deserves a mention for sure he's making the 12 i've yeah. all the confidence in the world that he's making the 12 i'd rather have selinger though 
I, I think Sullinger's just a better version. Yep. All right, Jared. Let's let's go ahead and end today's episode. We will catch everybody next week. Come join the Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, we're still active. Maybe not as active as we are during the football season, but we're still active in here. We're still having fun. Um, join the Patreon. Uh, you do get elevated access in the Discord server, although the Discord server is free. But there, there is elevated access in the Discord server if you're a patron. You get early access to episodes. You can join the live chat. But also, just think about it this way. Especially like during the season, if you're consuming all of our content and we're providing several hours of entertainment to you, is that worth $3 a month? I think so. Just to sort of keep things going. You also get ad free on the on the uh audio version of the podcast. You get your own pot your own personal podcast feed from Patreon, which uh you don't get those annoying spreaker ads that sort of run at the beginning end and there's that one in the middle. Those aren't there on your exclusive Patreon feed. Um so maybe that's worth three dollars a month to you. Um, maybe the discord part is worth $3 a month to you. Maybe just to help keep us going, uh, will help it keeping, keep things going for you. You know, maybe that's worth it to you. Um, you also get to force Jared to go deep into the metaphysical. Um, he's talking about our Patreon only episode called sloop cats only also called ask shenanigans, also called the shit show. Um, it's a hoot. Yeah, this week I drafted a team of Meyer Day era players against a team of Austin and Gangland who drafted the other team. That's a thing we did. A totally impromptu too. Like I hadn't planned on doing it. We were like five minutes into the episode, and Austin was seriously like, "Hey, you want to draft?" You want to draft a team against us? I was like, sure, fuck it. <laughs> Cause that's what happens during the secret Sloopcast or Sloop Cats only Patreon exclusive episode. And then we just did it. That's that's the sort of shenanigans you can expect on on that. Which by the way, that was so much fun that we're gonna kinda revamp it and then eventually do it on the regular show. Um which is this show. This is the regular Sloopcast show. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. So that's it. That's, that's the show. Come, come join us. Do it for the exclusive episode. Do it for the discord access. Do it with the, do it for, to avoid the ads. Do it just to support us. It's only $3 a month. The regular show is canceled years ago. Silly. I prefer to think that they just chose to end it because it ran its course. Thank you very much. Um, Jared, can you play that folk band I ask for sometimes? Only if you can give me their name on the other side of Kyle's Corner. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's Corner? Nope, nothing nothing, nothing much this week here. That is fair. Kyle Stahl. I... He, he, uh, you know, maybe try again next week, Austin, that, or like really hurry up. All right. Yep. That's all the plugs I feel like doing. Uh, by the way, t-shirt store. I'm wearing a t-shirt right now from our 7071 store. Uh, I, I, I can't do this mirrored. This is seriously a struggle for me. Kyle's also where Kyle, is that the Sloopcast version or the 7071 version? That's the 7071 version. Also from the 7071 store Kyle is wearing right now. Um, you can get a bunch of, it's like Ohio merch over at 7071.thesloopcast.com. If you want actual Sloopcast merch, um, then you can go to just merch.thesloopcast.com. So, with all that being said, Kyle, tonight's ending music, um, their name has like an animal in it. Not not good enough. I, I no, I'm trying. Show up prepared next time, Austin. <laughs> I'm I'm now trying to think for you based off of the animal, but I I I can't do it off the top of my head, not while talking. So we we do have to go now. Uh, tonight's ending music will be by the Raging Nathans. 
Oh, don't. Austin, that's fucking dirty. Don't do that. Tonight's ending music will be by the Raging Nathans. They're a punk band. Um, God, Austin, that was dirty. They're a punk band out of the uh, Dayton area, I do believe. So, um, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer. (laughs) Drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters once again. These are the Raging Nathans.